Clean Skies' Dee Bambani is joining us now with a closer look and an explanation of where this money may or may not go. Dee, good morning to you. Good morning, Tyler. Now, under the nation's economic stimulus, the industry will receive $93 million to develop wind power technology. Last week, the Energy Department invited all renewables to compete for $3 billion in energy grants. Even the states are doling out $5 billion for energy programs. But will all of this money work to bring more wind to the grid? There's a huge um, opportunity for the United States to build a brand new manufacturing base here. And it's, it's just, uh, it is this little policy uh, of having, you know, renewable electricity be an, in a, a national policy that will really kickstart that and add even more jobs. Um, Last year we added 55 new manufacturing facility and 35,000 new jobs in the U.S. Now the Obama administration says it wants to have wind power generate 20 percent of U.S. electricity by 2030. That's a goal set by the Bush administration. At the moment, wind generates only 1 percent of U.S. power. So how do you go from 1 percent to 20 percent? Right now, grid operators reach for the cheapest, most reliable source of energy, and that is not wind. Experts say what will make wind more attractive to grid operators is a price on carbon. The House passed a cap-and-trade bill that would limit industry emissions, and the Senate is expected to do the same. Bodie says the wind industry has already generated 35,000 new jobs and 55 new manufacturing facilities this past year alone, and the federal investment is worthwhile. But there are hurdles. Once the new turbines are built, new transmission is needed to ship that wind power to load centers. Getting those wires on the ground is a feat in itself mired in siting issues and cost allocation disputes. Now a smart grid, however, could get more wind power online. You may have a lot of, you may have 50 gigawatts of, or 50 megawatts of wind power uh, at 4 o'clock in the morning, and you may have none at 9 o'clock in the morning. And as that's moving around, the grid has to respond to those changes. And uh, if you have a smart grid that can respond to those changes, it's easier to add renewable uh, capacity onto the grid. Now, whether or not subsidizing the wind industry proves worthwhile long term will depend on congressional action over the next year. The 2030 goal has clearly changed the political landscape, but it could also change the physical landscape as well. It would require the planning and construction of 100,000 towers stretching 300 feet tall. Tyler. And we're already seeing backlash in North Carolina, as we right. reported there yesterday. Deep Bambani, thank you Thanks, very Tyler. much.